All right, well, if you're familiar with the channel, then you know what we're painting. And if you're new to the channel, you're here for this. So let's just dive right in. Hopefully you'll jump over to some other videos and hang out with us and uh, we can welcome you to the family. But for right now, let's roll. So we are painting. I don't know if you call this stuff chrome. It's called Moto Chrome, but I don't know if you actually call this chrome paint because you need to understand that chrome is not paint. Now I'm probably gonna refer to this as chrome paint because I don't know what else to call this. Um, maybe chrome-like paint, but uh, yeah. So let's dive right in. These wheels were, I think they were chrome, but these are the Well Pro Stars and they're pretty old. So they've been around for a really long time and they were wore out. We painted them satin black. I wasn't happy with the satin black. So now we are gonna paint them chrome. Why are they gloss black though? They are gloss black right now. So with this product right here, okay, if you buy it, there comes an, an extremely long uh, list of things, instructions to paint this stuff with. And one of the steps includes that you have to paint your product with a gloss black paint. So it has to be a gloss black paint and it cannot be scuffed up. So everything that you've learned about traditional paint, from what I'm reading on these instructions, you can pretty much just throw out the window and forget it because this is completely different. This stuff says, do not scuff the wheels. Another thing that this thing wants is once you paint your wheels black, I believe the dry time is four to five days. I think it's five days, maybe it's seven. The instructions will tell you everything. However, I am well outside of my window. These wheels have been sitting for about two weeks, uh, 14 days, so they're very dry. And then they also want your product to be glass-like. So they want it to be slick as glass. So no orange peel or anything like that. Now mine is not 100% as slick as glass, but as you can see, it's decent. Uh, it's got some orange peel and everything in it, okay? But I think it's gonna be decent for what I wanna do. I'm not gonna go through here and redo it. It does have some trash in it. So up in here, you can see some trash. So this job that I'm about to do is probably not gonna turn out the greatest, but we're gonna see. Uh, this is my wheels, and this is the first time spraying this, so I'm going to try it. You should be able to search for this part number right here on Google and find their website. It should pop up their website. I'm not sponsored by them. They didn't send me this for free. I paid full price, and they don't know who I am. Uh, I just wanted to show y'all how these wheels turn out for anybody that's been on a journey and how I've done it in case they turn out amazing um, or if they turn out like crap. <laughs> so if you search Google for that right there, you should be able to find a pr uh, product. So we're gonna go and put this in our paint gun. Uh, now that we've done all of our first steps, our, our second, third, whatever steps are gonna be to put this on extremely light. Now they say put this product on so light that basically turn in your fluid flow on your paint gun, turn it all the way in so it flows no fluid at all, and then back it out one quarter turn. When you back it out one quarter turn, I think they said you also want a two inch fan pattern. You're basically gonna be painting blinded because you're not gonna be able to see the product hardly. It's gonna be so freaking faint that it's gonna be uh, unreal. And I, I imagine the reason why is because look how liquidy that is. You can tell that if you, if you pound this on, I can already tell we're gonna get runs like crazy. So I imagine that's why they want this stuff put on extremely, extremely light. Um, you know and uh we'll see so they recommend that you use like a detail gun or an airbrush gun so a little detail gun is going to be something like this uh, however i don't like them and i don't ever use them and i don't have a good one that actually works good uh you know what everybody knows what an airbrush gun looks like it's going to be like that little harbor freight guy but i'm not going to use them and if you were painting the whole car all over you would not be using them either and i know people paint whole entire cars with this stuff so i'm going to use my traditional paint gun now one thing they want is a two inch fan pattern so on my gun your fan pattern's up here so you got to choke your fan pattern in until you get the two inch now how i achieve that is i just tested this out there but there's a lot of vacuuming going on and noises out there right now so I'm not gonna do it out there, but I am just gonna show you real fast in here exactly what I did. Basically all I did was I kept adjusting it and then I sprayed it on there. You can't really see it in here. I had a gray board out there and then I took my tape measure and I checked it. This is just paint thinner. We're gonna choke our fan pattern, which is gonna be this one. We're gonna choke this thing all the way in as far as it goes 
so that it flows absolutely nothing out of it. They said choke it all the way in and then just one quarter turn, back it off is what they say. And that's gonna pretty much flow with no fluid at all, practically. We're just gonna pour this stuff straight into the paint gun and we're gonna go in there and mist this on. It has to be dusted on, misted on. It says four to five coats is the full coverage. Um, there's some other stuff in the instructions about wiping it and everything. If, you, if you're gonna do this, you just need to read the instructions thoroughly because they're like a page and a half long. So I can literally not even see the product. Like I can barely see it when I get up close. I can smell it and I tested it on something else. I know it's coming out. Just keep doing this. I'm gonna put the camera down because this is gonna take a long time. And I'm just literally gonna keep dusting it on just like they say. And we'll see what we get. You can start to almost see where it's like dusty. So it almost looks like it's literally like dust just sitting on the surface. Like it looks dirty, especially right here. That's the product. It literally looks dirty, like I could wipe it off. All right, let me put the camera down and I'm gonna keep All right, it. So I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but it looks more glossy. And what that is, is it's starting to have a chrome dust to it. Now I literally just kept dusting the paint over top of it, but you can actually see, you can see it sitting on top of there. The camera is so freaking fine that the camera's probably gonna struggle to pick it up, but I don't know if you can tell that everything looks more reflective and like a deeper, richer black already, and that's just with one coat. It doesn't say how long to let it dry between coats. It says if you're gonna wipe it between coats to let it sit for 30 to 45 minutes. So do one coat, let it sit 30, 45 minutes, wipe it down with a clean microfiber towel, move on to the next step. We're not gonna do that step because I already am not starting with a uh, product that looks amazing and it says that's the way you get the best results so even if I try to get the best results by painting it the best way possible I'm not gonna get the best results because I'm starting on something that's not 100% as slick as glass so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the the first option they give you which is to do all your coats and then let it sit 30 45 minutes and then gently wipe it down and then I will explain the clear coat process uh, to you. So let me keep building up these coats slowly and carefully and making sure they're dry and I'll show you what All right, so you can definitely definitely start to see a chrome uh, Chrome light finish in it now. Okay, you can see the reflection a whole lot more than when we started And it actually looks better in person than what I'm seeing on the phone screen right here um, It definitely looks dusty now. It said to wipe down the wheels beforehand with the microfiber towel. It also says wipe it with denatured alcohol. That's to get any grease and anything off of it. I did not wipe it down with denatured, denatured alcohol because I knew this was a, a brand new paint job that had no grease or grime or nothing on it. However, denatured alcohol does not create a static charge. So uh, I could have messed up on that and we'll see how this turns out on the backside, but maybe denatured alcohol is an important step and maybe you should follow the directions to a T. I'm pretty bad about skipping steps. One thing I also did was I wiped it down with a tack rag because as a painter, we always wipe everything down with a tack rag. This does have a sticky substance to it to help pick up trash. And I'm almost wondering if I messed up on that also because I can see some spots. The camera's hard to pick it up. Like right here, okay, these spots right here, it's kind of like when pollen sits on your car and you kind of touch it and smear it. It kind of almost looks like the reflection is smeared. And so I'm wondering if some of that stuff off of that tack rag was obviously sitting on the wheel and has messed up the finish. Now it does tell you that when you're completely done with this job to take a microfiber rag again and wipe it down and polish it out to like a shine. Um, so I, I don't, I, we'll see how this looks on the backside, but I'm almost curious if I've already kind of sabotaged myself and my, messed myself up. But I do see a big difference already and just the reflections. So I'm gonna keep getting at it. I kind of changed my method. I was kind of doing like this and everything. Now I'm literally just swirling the gun in circles 
and that hits the center of the hub and all the way up to the beadlock. So I'm just swirling it in circles around like this so that I can equally coat everything because I kind of want everything to be coated out equal. So it says to let them sit for 30 minutes to an hour and then wipe them down with a clean microfiber cloth. This is the step that I'm super nervous about because it's not normal for me to put a rag on my paintwork um, after I've done it before clear coat. But it says to do that. It says if you rub too far through to the black base that you can simply retouch it up. But that after it has sat for 24 hours not to rub it because we're going to let this we have to let this sit for 24 hours before we can clear coat them um so here goes nothing i'm super super nervous it says like to polish it out or rub it to a beautiful shine or reflection is what it says i don't know exactly what i'm even looking for i can definitely tell that my job not being as slick as it should have been definitely hurt me. And I feel like using the microfiber or using the tack rag beforehand also hurt me because I feel like them smudges can still be seen in the chrome. So if I was to redo this, I would not, I would follow the instructions better, I guess. I would not be using a tack rag. How it looks is if you have chrome rims and you accidentally get tire shine on them or armor all, that's the exact look that it looks like right now. Like in the spots that are messed up, I guess you could say. I'm blown away that it's not like wiping off because uh, we didn't scuff the wheels. And so I think that the crap won't even stick to it. There's nothing on the towel. I do wish if I also go back, I would have stopped a little bit earlier where this stuff kind of looked like black chrome. I would have stopped about there and just gave it a uh, black chrome look versus going as far as I went. I wasn't really sure what it would look like. I wasn't sure if it would like get better. The, um, the imperfections were worse. But looking back now, I would definitely, definitely have stopped. So let me get all this wiped out. I don't really know what I'm looking for. I don't know how far to go. I don't know what's too much. I'm paying very close attention. It, it don't look that great right now, but I think that is definitely because again of my prep work. So my, my, this stuff is following your paint job. So if your paint job is orange pilly and it's not slick as glass, then this stuff's not gonna be slick as glass. 
And that and that's really hard when you're doing rims to get them slick as glass. Because normally when you get something as slick as glass, then it, uh, it's it's pretty thick. And when you do that on rims, it seems to run. Uh, I feel like I got my black finish pretty freaking good for a set of wheels, but. You can definitely see the orange peel, like in the chrome. The chrome almost looks orange peely. I want to spray it. it the, the way it looks is you want to go get cleaner and spray cleaner on it. Like that's literally the way it looks. It literally looks like there's tire shine kind of all over the chrome. Let me see if I can catch it on the camera. See that? See how it's just like so hard to see. You can see the orange bill in it. The camera's making it look way worse. And you don't, it don't have a reflection. It's almost like, it's almost like it looked better before I started wiping. All right, so we're gonna clear our wheels. What we're using is an Omni 270. Now this is a production clear. Now this company with this paint recommends you to use their clear however i'm a firm believer in there's nothing different about it you got high solids clear production clear stuff like that but from one brand to another um i really don't feel like you're gonna see a difference now this vitex stuff is really cheap this stuff's about 180 dollars for you know this the hardener and this i think um the stuff we sprayed on randy's car for instance on his fox body if you're an og to the channel and you've been around that's about 800 to so 1,000 a gallon, whereas this is about 180 a gallon. But um, I don't think the see-through like part of the clear, I just don't think there's that big of a difference in the product that they would sell versus Omni. Omni is a pretty good brand. It's not the most high-end by any means. Oh, I got paint in there. Boy, I about really messed up. Um, so I don't think there's really that big of a difference. So I did not choose to buy their clear. Now, my job, I already feel like, looks like crap beforehand, but uh, I don't think buying their clear is going to do anything. So, let's go in here. We'll shoot one coat on. If I don't like the way it looks, I'm thinking I'm going to tint it, basically make a smoked clear and make black chrome, um, but we'll see how the first coat turns out. So, here's what we have. Again, I'm extremely unhappy with my quality, not the product. The product looks good. But because of my product, my quality being orange pilly, um, I'm not super stoked with it. I think they would look good on the vehicle. You can almost see now that it's chrome, you can see where like I started to sag around the edge right there. I mean, th this chrome makes my work look so bad when it looks so good before. Because you got to think about it. You're turning your work into a freaking mirror. And there's no way, again, that you can slick these things out 100% like glass because it will literally just run, you know, down there, for instance, I mean, that looks good besides the splotchiness, which I think again is my fault. I think putting a tack rag on it was not a good choice. Um, but overall, man, like you're, I mean, you're zoomed way in. Let's put the phone, okay, we're gonna take the phone and set it on the beat lock. Okay, so that's the phone on the beat lock. Like the wheels don't look that bad. So if you're in normal distance from the wheels, I think these things are gonna look amazing on the car. It's just when you get up super close. They almost have like a black chrome look to them now, honestly. So that's just why I wanna put a clear coat on them, see what they look like. Let's turn on the booth and put clear coat. I think I'm gonna just blow them off to make sure there's no dust on them. You're not supposed to tack rag them. You're not supposed to do anything. You're not supposed to wipe them or nothing. So let's just blow them off, make sure there's no dust sitting on there, even though there's trash already all in the previous work. And uh, let's see what we get, man. All right, so the clear coat did not help at all. If anything, it just made it worse. It definitely lost some of the reflection, but you can still see so many flaws. Um, so in my opinion, it looks like complete crap. And again, it's 100% because of my mistakes. So what we are going to try to do now is save this mission save this job with this little guy right here this is one ounce of black candy so this is black candy a toner i think for candy or whatever we are going to i only bought one ounce because this stuff's expensive um i'm gonna tint my clear coat with this now if you've been around for a while you have know that i you know that 
I often tint my clear coat with base coat. So if I'm doing tail lights or something like that and I'm gonna smoke them, I simply take a black base coat and I cut it in with my clear coat and that makes, you know, uh, smoke tail lights. However, when you're going over top of chrome or a mirror, that can look very, very splotchy, very splotchy. So the black candy is a little bit more transparent, I believe, the toner, the whatever. And I'm hoping that this will get us where we need. Now I have nothing to sample this on. Maybe I should sample this on the side of a can or something. Maybe I'll do that. Um, because I don't, I can't keep, I'll run it. Basically, if you go in there and keep trying, then you'll run it. It's not like a tail light where I can let it flash off and then put more on it. Like it's, it's dangerous because it's inside of a, the, the barrel of the rim. So we're going to start out faint with this. So that's my first coat of tint. Not exactly where I want to be at. So I just upped it with a little bit more tint for my next coat. Once we get the darkness that we want, then we'll probably maybe, maybe, I take this case by case. <laughs> Maybe we'll follow it up with just a straight coat of clear. Not sure. I know on camera y'all probably say it looks pretty good, but in person, I mean, it looks like that when you zoom in or you look really, really close. I still think it would be a good looking wheel to run. I just want a little bit better results if I can achieve them. All right, let's see how they turned out. If I didn't run them. Like I said, again, they're not. Dude, it's not like they're terrible. I'm just being super picky. And it just, they don't look that great in person at all. Um, but it's not the product, it's me. It's literally me. I'm the issue. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm on the fence, I'm torn. I don't know if I'm gonna sand these things again really good and paint them something else or if I'm gonna mount some radials up on these things and uh, run them. I don't know, I'm just, this, I'm not happy with that. That's the stuff I'm not happy with, is the way that looks. If this was a gloss black wheel, you would never see none of that because of just how the shadows and everything, that wheel would be freaking flawless. But being it's reflective now, you can see everything. Uh, that black, it's, it's literally like a black chrome now man um what is my takeaway on this well my takeaway on this is probably not to use this product on rims or deep dish rims maybe rims that you can get inside of that's fine if you can't get your uh original gloss black okay if you can't get that as slick as glass don't use this product so if you if you're in an area such as this where if i made this slicker I would have ran it, okay? So if you cannot get it slick, don't use this product. If you cannot get a clean job and keep trash out of your job, such as all this trash right here, trash, 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 that's my fault. The product worked perfectly fine. If you can't keep trash out of your job, don't use this product. <laughs> There's going to be my takeaways. Learn from my uh, lessons, you know, my trials and errors, and, uh, you know, Take it for what it is. I don't know. I've got to sleep on this and decide if I want to run these on my car or if I want to paint them black. I might just go ahead and try them like they are, maybe, and see if I like them. Maybe I should get some weld racing decals and put in there so they kind of look like the weld alphas or something, and maybe that will cover up a lot of it. Uh, you know, break it, break it up where it don't look so bad. But I don't know. They might still be too dark for my taste. I didn't like the satin black. I never tried the gloss black on, so I'm half tempted just to sand these things out smooth, get all the trash out of them, and then reshoot them again with um, gloss black and put them on the car. I should have tried them on with the gloss black, but I didn't. You know in the comments, my hands are dirty because I was literally working on a diesel between all this. <laughs> That's probably the reason why the job's not clean. Well, let me know in your comments your thoughts and takeaway on this style chrome rims. Thanks, y'all.